the second hour, but I will hit on the Eagles. I show up to training camp today. My expectations on that team, I don't have any. But because they play in the NFC East, I don't know. Could they get lucky? Could another team, could Dak have another injury? Listen, I'm not a fortune teller. I'm, I'm not Nostradamus here that is just going to rub a lamp and go, hey, what do you think happened, Sills? You know, if I knew that, I'd have the lottery numbers and the Powerball numbers, and I wouldn't be talking to you. I'd burn the bridges and go somewhere so I don't have to put up with pathetic people. Okay? That's what I'd be doing. So for me, I mean, how I looked at, at them going into the upcoming season, what's their depth like? Well, they're playing musical chairs at the old line position. If this guy works out here, if that guy works out here, how about their defense? You know, yesterday we were talking to Rick Goslin, and Rick Goslin said that eight of the 11 guys on the Dallas Cowboys needed to be replaced on defense. I don't know. When I look at that front seven, I'm keeping a healthy Fletcher Cox. But, I mean, really, how about getting after somebody, too? How about a pass rusher? How about your secondary play? How about your line? Be looking for how he's been looking for a guy at safety for three years now. I mean, their secondary's not very good because, one, you're not getting enough pressure on the quarterback. Fletcher Cox, who I love, has been in and out of the lineup because of injuries. And why is that? Well, when you have a ballet routine on your offense that's going one, two, three, kick each and every single series, you're going to wear the hell out of that defense the same way that Chip Kelly wore that defense out a couple years ago. Running 85 plays. Did you not think when you hired that stiff that you're thinking that you're going to run 85 plays in the NFL? You need balance, man. Anytime you're up near that number 85 plays and you're not scoring 39 points and you're around 25, you're a ballet routine, which means you're putting your defense on the field and you got to play 17 of them things now. Not just 16, 17 of them things. You don't have the depth you had like you had in college. Homeboys at UCLA now had 85 guys, and if a guy – Got hurt, he had another first rounder at Oregon. Can't play that route in the NFL. You think you're going to throw 80 plays up and you're going to have that run and gun shoot type offense. It's going to get your team killed. And when your quarterback's not playing well like Wentz didn't last year, why do you think that side of the football is underachieved, banged up, and lacking depth? And when you come off a Super Bowl year, what happens? Guys want to get paid, and then you got to start moving money because you were all in for that moment to win a Super Bowl. There was a year that the Eagles had the best D-line and O-line as a combination in the league. You know what's happened since the Super Bowl? That's diminished big time. They went from one to, like, what, 15. That line's decent on O. The D-line, I don't know. I don't see them being world beaters and getting quarterbacks on their back. And I start there in the pits. I know everybody wants to go, well, what about Devontae? How are you going to get the football to Devontae if your old line's getting your inexperienced quarterback's ass kicked? So, as I said, expectations? I have none for them. And when I look at the roster, what they have – now, listen, like I said, it's the NFC East. You get a chance to play the Giants. Daniel Jones? <laughs> okay, you're lucky it's Daniel Jones. And watch this. And you're lucky it's not Eli. Eli'd win that division today. He'd be the best quarterback in that division, including Dak. Washington, dude, the best quarterback in the division may actually be in Washington. It depends on what Ryan Fitzpatrick we get. If we get Ryan Fitzpatrick, they could win the division. If they get Connor McGregor, he looks like him. That team will win seven games. Then again, that may be good enough to win that division. So where are the Eagles in that process? 
Here, watch. Best quarterback. I, I, I guess it's Dak. I guess what? Because he makes the most? That's not an evaluation. It doesn't start with paychecks. It starts with wins and losses. How's Dak done the last three years? Look at the numbers. Last three years, winning and losing. Yeah, but Danny's through for a lot of yards. I don't care what he's done. I'm talking yards and touchdowns and picks. I'm talking wins. I'm talking wins here. Eagles at best, at best, are a seven-win team. That could maybe win the division. How about this? I think the Eagles could probably get into the last two weeks of the season and still have some formula to get into the playoffs. If everything goes well for them, they could get into the last two weeks. And quite frankly, if they if they have a winning record in the NFC East, they could win the division. But that's a big order, man. That's a big order. They don't have the defense Washington has. Hey, and, and the best defender in that division is now Chase Young, and he's in Washington. Who's the best coach in that division, the NFC East? I think it's Ron Rivera. I think it's Rivera. Ron's a hell of a coach, hell of a defensive-minded scheme guy. And if they get in for a round seven, I can't go any higher than that. I had some toolbox going, man, this team right here is going to surprise because of da Devante. <laughs> what about your whole line, dude? You're playing musical chairs with them guys. That's not how you win. You win with stability. That's why the Buccaneers wanted to bring every one of them dudes back. All right.